So let us get to it right off the bat. Was this good? Yes, this was pretty good for what it is, but it'll puzzle people. So let me get the terminology out of the way because I think people will be thrown. I just want to say this as a qualification. Was this a good film? No. Was this a good prototype of a film? Yes. There were a lot of great scenes, a lot of excellent moments, but it didn't really come together as a narrative. If people think I'm contradicting myself, I'm not. I would judge this as, quote, a good film, in quotation marks. But the narrative was fairly weak. There really wasn't much of a story. A lot of the characters didn't make a whole lot of sense. They were fairly thin. I do think Riley worked for me. The central performance was pretty good. There were basically no bad performances. I think across the board, they all did an excellent job. And given how young some of the cast was, it's pretty impressive. The problem is when they say the dialogue, they say it's fairly generic. We've been here before. They've kind of done the addiction theme before. And really, that's the only one of two things I could pick out. The other one was structures. It's about addictions and about structures. It's a lot of boxes, a lot of box metaphor, squares, round, spheres. And I like that stuff. I like that stuff within the Hellraiser mythos. Kind of a not professional mathematician, but I like exploring mathematics. I see documentaries on those things, but it didn't quite come together. It just felt a lot of flashy stuff, but it's not flashy in a bad way. It just felt like it's a extra whipped cream. But when you dig into it, it's like felt kind of hollow. But nevertheless, I don't regret seeing it. I do recommend this very highly. I think this is a very respectable sequel. This does, in fact, continue the story from Hellraiser 1 and 2. I don't know how much it does, but it's very much tied to the original Hellraiser universe. And it is much better than most of the sequels. But it's far short of the first two, unfortunately. I was hoping we would have a kind of Prey debate where with Prey, we're debating whether Prey is as good as the original or even maybe close to it. This is probably not going to happen with this one. This felt like a very respectable attempt by people who know Hellraiser and like Hellraiser to do their version and interpretation. And for the most part, it was respectable, but it still felt lackluster in a few key ways and moments. But for the most part, a lot of great stuff, great sound design, great performances. For the budget they had, the special effects were really good. And even though I didn't like most of the designs for the Cenobites, they definitely put an effort in to give it a distinct look. I was a little disappointed with Jamie, and I'll go into that in a moment. But let me just finish the Cenobites. In my trailer reaction, if you heard it, I was pretty uniform. I didn't like any of the Cenobites. But I will correct myself that some of the Cenobites did work for me. I say about three of them were interesting. They don't quite make sense with the story they're doing. These Cenobites felt a little bit too aggressive for the other Cenobites, but so be it. There's a lot of Cenobites. When you think they're done, like, oh, four or five more are coming. I appreciated that because there will be at least some of the Cenobites that will work for people. They give you quite a variety. So if one or two of the Cenobites don't really make it for you, don't worry, more are coming. So I'm, I don't think almost any Hellraiser fan is going to come away with not being satisfied by at least some of the Cenobites. But I knew the Chatterer wouldn't work. It's an interesting attempt, but he does things which I don't think he ever did. And, uh, I appreciate the more leather look. That's me. I'm more of a classic person. I prefer the classic 80s, 90s culture. So it's a little hard for me to get a test this version, but it was very good. It's very respectable. It definitely was trying to do its own thing, but we have kind of been here before, but it's sort of a new angle with the Cenobites, basically, and these people stuck in a hotel, essentially. But the hotel moves. The hotel can be reshaped. That was interesting. And for the most part, the story that they present for what it is makes enough sense. It's coherent enough. You can kind of get from A to B, but when you do so, it's going like, okay, what's the big deal? I don't care. But this is much stronger so far than any of the new Halloween films, where there, it seems they did give you a story, but the story is beyond stupid. It doesn't make any sense. And the plot holes are so massive, like you just got to turn off your brain and you just have a few good scenes and you just go back to those good scenes. And that's about it. This felt the opposite. This had a lot of good scenes, a lot of them, but they never quite came together to make a movie. They just had good individual moments, a good sequence and a bad sequence just flip-flopping all over the place, and it's way more good than bad, but I can see why people gave it a low rating, sometimes 6 out of 10 or 7 out of 10, because 
whatever you think about the first couple of films, even the third one, which I know radically retconned the Cenobites into something very different, like Pinhead is more like Freddy Krueger, I still appreciate those first four films. This feels like their attempt to do Bloodline in their own way, and I respect that. But I did think, frankly, that the new Pinhead wasn't boring, but they went way too far in making her way too serious. You definitely know, don't mess with this hell priestess. It just wasn't used correctly, I think. She was intimidating, but I think they went overboard with the voice. And that's always going to be a big problem because to me, you can never really replace Doug Bradley or the way he does the voice for that character. I'd expect her to be better. It's a very strong performance, but it just felt a little too stiff at certain points. It seems here they're going with the Cenobites definitely serve Leviathan. And that's been missing from the other entries. So we're getting that here. And that kind of stripped them of personality. They're just serving Leviathan. They're just playing these experiments. And beyond a certain point, it didn't get boring. It was just like, oh, okay, that's just one note. They got to it. We're done. But Riley does pull a few tricks. That was interesting. They do give her a lot of agency within the constraints because these Cenobites are not to be played with. They are very terrifying. They're very powerful. I was never scared, but they do give off a very terrifying kind of cosmic creepiness. And that worked for this film. But I can't hide. I did come in with somewhat high expectations and was disappointed. But a very good film overall. But don't expect like a great narrative or many great characters. Only a few of the characters are staying with me or even why they did what they did. The twists when they happen were so predictable. And we're like, oh, okay. It was ho-hum. I will say I couldn't predict where the film was going. But once you lay out the old secrets, you're like, oh, yeah, of course. So. I'm very mixed, but I'm very mixed positive. I will recommend this very highly. I think this score is still a little too low, but having seen Pearl, that felt way more cohesive, way more focused. And that's, I think, what I wanted this to be, kind of in a Pearl situation or a Prey situation. But whatever I think or want, I have to go with what I honestly believe this thing is. This is, quote, a good film, but it is very lacking in many critical respects but in other respects it's very strong so i'm gonna give this 7.75 i want to go higher but i do think they just fell short not totally short but just just short of being a genuinely great film this is a very good film but it lacks the critical ingredients to be a film so what it's better to have you know half of a great film better have a good prototype film than no film at all but it did feel like honestly like I'm not even joking, like 40 minutes here, pretty much wasted, complete waste of time, no need for it. It is overstuffed for no reason. It's just stalling the inevitable. But when we get to quote the real story, it's disjointed scenes, but they're pretty good. The Cenobites do come off fairly strong. They're very formidable. But it does feel like a lot of interesting ideas haven't yet gelled together to make a great story. But so be it. It's a very respectable entry. I don't think almost any Hellraiser fan will be disappointed. But if you are a hardcore fan, you will get a little bit more out of this and get a few of the extra Easter eggs. So very good. I will recommend this, but it will be lacking in certain critical respects. So be ready for that.